So there's one kind of major rule of thumb you have to know about the GTA housing market. And that is the idea of windows of opportunity. For buyers, those windows of opportunities are usually short, meaning that they're maximum of few months, maybe four, five, six months max. And for sellers, those windows of opportunities last for many months, a year, year and a half, et cetera. So for the past 10 years or so of the GTA housing market, buyers, you've had little windows of opportunity here and there, usually only a few months at a time. Sellers, you've had all the rest of the time. So that's something to keep in mind. For sellers, it allows you to be a little more relaxed. If you're looking to sell for buyers, it means that when the opportunity is there, if you've seen any of my previous uh, housing market updates, you'll know, take advantage of those opportunities. So as always, beautiful people, Andrew the Realtor here with my February 2024 uh, housing market update. So let me move myself. Important stuff uh, of the greater Toronto housing market area. Uh, obviously, I want to make sure to cover the whole area. So Jerry's inflation numbers are in. We're going to discuss that very briefly because that's important. Uh, it's going to lead to uh, an effect on the interest rates. As the market picks up, buyer's windows, just talked about the rule of thumb, that window has pretty much closed. In fact, in many areas of Toronto, that, that's gone. Multiple offers, bidding wars, etc. So I don't want to discourage you, but I want to make sure that you guys have the actual facts, the actual numbers, you know, the facts on the ground, as they like to say. Um, and of course, sellers, the spring market approaches, very important. Things are only going to be picking up, especially if anything happens with interest rates. And guys, listen, a word of caution. If you don't like the numbers and such, uh, you can skip forward to the end of the video because there's an important word of caution for both buyers and sellers. Really, really important, especially 2024 as it was in 2023. Please take note of that. And again, if you don't like the numbers and stuff, maybe you're not particularly interested, go towards the end. You want to hear it. So uh, onwards. Uh, as always, I want to provide information. The whole purpose of these videos, guys, uh, I don't get anything for this. I want to provide information. Hit like and subscribe. Um, and of course, if you need anything, please, please contact me. I've, I've had calls from agents, sellers, buyers, the whole bit. Uh, so if you have, you're thinking of entering the market or you're not sure what to do, maybe you want to dis uh, discuss something that I mentioned in the videos, please give me a shout. Contact information is at the bottom of the video. And very important, I'm going to minimize myself more. This is very important. Guys, for my friends in Toronto, Please, please, please hear me here. Um, I'm doing this at the end of February. I got about a week of February left. And uh, if you're getting this and it's before February, there's a deadline for uh, declaring the status of uh, 2023 status of your residence. So uh, that's very, very important. Unfortunately, I don't like it, but there is a property tax. There's a tax on vacant homes and uh, they'll want you to, the city of Toronto will want you to make sure that you declare. So there is a link. If you want to pause this, look at the link at the bottom. You can put, put that in or look at the bottom of the description of the video and you'll find a direct link. You can click on it and it'll take you to the city of Toronto uh, website that uh, the page that actually has that in there. So please understand that very important. Uh, as much as I hate to say it, you know, you want to know at least if you're late, I'm sure there's penalties or something, you know, the cities are. So anyway, I want to make sure you guys know that. So moving right along, we we're talking about inflation and here are the inflation numbers. Just a few days ago, we got the inflation numbers for January. Uh, February 20th was the date. And if you notice, it's 2.9%. So well, uh, well, under 3%. Actually, a little bit of ahead of schedule, which is great. And if you look at the annual numbers for 23, 22, um, it does look like things are going to be closer to the mid to low twos by the end of the year, which is almost where the Bank of Canada will want inflation anyway. Now, I understand groceries and such things are so expensive. I have no idea why gas is so expensive in Canada, but nonetheless, that's a different subject. Um, but this is a, this is a big deal. So naturally, as we know, as the inflation goes down, interest rates will inevitably follow, as we've been hearing. I would highly recommend you look at my last month's January 24 um, uh, market update because I have a lot of good information in that and a lot of people saw that one. So numbers, uh, interest rates. So the next, uh, the next uh, meeting of the Bank of Canada is going to be March the 6th. Uh, not sure what's going to happen there. Possible, uh, possibly they say the same, possibly they will actually go down, uh, maybe take, take an, make an interest rate cut. Uh, personally speaking, and as much as I would love to have lower interest rates, I hope they do it more in the summer only because things are already busy. I'll show you the numbers in January. Very high. You'll be surprised. And uh, if it happens, if the great cut happens in March or April, which is in the middle or the beginning of the spring market, which is already going to be busy, it's going to just put too much gas on the fire, so to speak. If they do in the summer, the summer tends to be a little bit slower in the GTA, as most places uh, with our kind of weather, weather patterns, um, then at least, you know, it will have less of an effect on the market. Nobody wants the market to go crazy. Honestly, it's not sustainable. I know sellers want to get more and more for the house, but remember, you got to buy somewhere too. You know, uh, you want to make these, not fair, but, you know, a little more even keel and sustainable. Sustainable is a big, uh, important word for the GTA housing market. So um, March 6th is the next meeting. Who knows? But if you'll notice, again, we're at 5% and it has not changed in several months. Why is that important? I'm going to give you a slide that I did last month. I'm going to use it again. 
uh, when I move forward, show you kind of a pattern that is happening. So let me move myself. And this is important. Again, if you're a numbers person, get to the summary towards the latter part of the video. And of course, the last piece is very important for you guys. Don't, don't miss that. So last month, uh, on the left side, you're going to find um, January, month, year over year. So January uh, last month versus January of 2023. And notice the huge difference in homes sold. Now, January 23, 2023, was pretty slow in general, uh, but not crazy slow. And look at that. I mean, almost 40% increase. Now, if you look at my video, just to, you know, not to pat myself on the back, but make sure you guys know that I'm actually giving you the right information, not just some guy giving opinion. My thought was in January, as I was looking at the numbers, I was going to say probably somewhere close to 40% increase in sales. And some people didn't believe me. Some people like, well, there's no way. It looks like everything's slow. It isn't. That's because days of market. We'll talk about that. But almost 40%, 37% increase in uh, prices. So, in, excuse me, in um, sales volume. So that's a big deal. Now, prices actually went down a percent. Now, on average, I always say take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but generally, uh, 1% at an average price of over a million dollars, not a huge difference. Um, so generally speaking, prices have pretty much maintained since I think almost July of last year. Um, and of course, the stagnant fall of last year didn't help prices. They just kind of maintained everything. Um, where will they go? I'll mention that in the next slide. So important new listings. Look at uh, the new listings of January 2024. So they weren't bad, consistent. Um, active listings, the, that second the green uh, circle there, active listings over 10,000. Now, I want you to pay attention to that. In a crazy low inventory market, like January 2017, for example, uh, which was, I think, three to 4,000 uh, active listings, incredibly low, which led to a very crazy market in the first quarter, first half of 2017, um, even probably crazier than 22, not sure, price-wise different. Um, over 10,000 active listings in January is actually a pretty even market. Pretty even market. So how do you get so many sales in, a, in that kind of market? And well, it's because we had an increase in new listings as well. So the point of this being, January was quite active after a very active December. Sales in, uh, in quite a bit up, almost 40%, which tells us that the pent up demand from last year, when things weren't selling in the fall and it was low, really low, slow going, um, those people are in the market right now and they're buying. Sellers take note. So days are market, something I wanted to mention to you as well. Uh, now, this is average. So you have some very expensive homes sitting for several months on the market. And of course, you have some homes selling in a week or so. So take average with a grain of salt, as I always say. But property days are market, that blue circle there, um, January of uh, January last month was 54. So that's almost two months on the market. Sellers, if you're starting to panic after two or three weeks, I mentioned this almost every month for the past six months. Um, if Don't panic. Don't give away your home. Consider the fact that properties are sitting a little bit longer in the market. Know what that number is for your specific area, not just GTA wide, but your specific area of Toronto, your specific area of the GTA. Find out what that is. Feel free. Give me a shot. I'll let you know. I'll give you the numbers. Not a problem at all. Uh, and you'll find out, hey, is my home sitting longer than average on average or is it well below average? And maybe I need to stop panicking and let the you know, kind of nature take its course. Price wise, we're pretty much even across the board. Semi attached up uh, just under 2%. Condos down 0.6%. Pretty much even price wise. So, um, Month over month, on the right side, you're going to see the only thing really important there. I know the price went down, but again, it's on average. It's not a huge 4%. Sounds like a lot. It, it isn't because it's an average. Again, depends on what homes are selling. Um, but the new listings, interestingly, are significantly. Notice the new listings in uh, January versus December. I mean, tremendously. Uh, double, more than double, uh, which is normal for January, but not, not quite that much. And active listings are... Um, pretty much the same as December. So it was a busy December, busy January, maybe thanks to the, some of the mild weather, uh, we were having consistent sales in those two months. And of course, then you have property days on market. Yeah, yeah, it's up, it's up. So again, please, please keep that in mind. So buyers, as I mentioned here, it's back to tough sledding. And I don't want to discourage you because it's a GTA. I want to be realistic with you. That's absolutely, absolutely, you're absolutely able to buy a home. You're absolutely going to be able to get something, um, especially depending on the area. Some areas are not nearly as busy as others, and that's important for, to know. I, I really, as a side rant, I really don't like when they put Canada's housing market or the GTA housing market, even I do GTA, but Ontario's housing market, because there are specific markets that are very different. So you're going to find downtown or North Toronto, Midtown Toronto, very different than, you know, Whitby. Why? Because it's a very different market. Now, is it GTA? Yes, it is the GTA. But you really need to know specific markets. That's why I do this generally for the GTA, not Canada-wide, specifically for our kind of hot market. And then if you need something specific, give me a shout. I'll be able to give you something more very specific for your neighborhood, your area. So sellers, things are pretty much back to normal. Now, please keep in mind, I mentioned, not crazy, normal. This isn't 2022. This isn't 2017. But it's normal. So if you need to sell, don't wait for something to go crazy. It's going to be quite busy. Let's get planning on that. Next slide. So here is the pattern. What's going to happen? So I mentioned this. 
This is actually from last month, same almost exact thing. So this is 2023, what happened in 2023. So we had January and the prices started going up. People got tired, there were four months, four months of no interest increases. Buyers got tired of waiting. They noticed prices aren't changing and they got into the market. And what was the pattern in terms of price? I'm talking about price specifically. Guys, take note. I already had conversations this week with people who thought maybe their price is going to be going down. We're going to wait for the price to go down. Please don't. It hasn't. They haven't, even with the interest rate increases. And notice what happened last year. It went up and up and up and up. June and July, those two red circles, that is where um, we had interest rate increases. And it slowed down a little bit. But please note, look at December versus January. December was still way higher. And this is 2023. This is last year. Now, what do you think is going to happen this year when it's not four, but six months by the time we hit March of no interest rate increases? And the market, you, as I've shown to you, has already increased in terms of sales. What's going to happen to the prices? The prices are maintaining or going up. Those are the only two options. As a matter of fact, my opinion, it's going to go up consistently well into the summer. And if their interest rate drops, possibly in summer, possibly towards the latter half of this year, then interest rate, uh, the, the prices are only going to be going up. So please understand that this is the pattern. This is exactly the same pattern that's going to be happening this year, as is already evident in terms of the sales volume, it's going to happen with prices as well. So learn from this. So learn from history. Quick summary, guys. I want to get to do this. So uh, buyers, some of this is from last month. Some of this is new. Uh, there are a few pockets that are still buyer friendly. Like I mentioned, Please understand, whenever you see articles or even my own stuff here in the GTA, again, please look at specific areas, specific neighborhoods. There's vast differences. What could be sitting for two months in one area could be sold in under a week in another. That's very important to know, especially price, price ranges and that kind of thing. The rest of the GTA is pretty much back on the seller side. So yes, there are places where things are setting for the most part. If you're a buyer, consider that, listen, you're going into enemy territory. You're, you're going to be, you know, you're going to have to put some work in to get the house. Uh, sellers, take note. It's pretty much wide open uh, in terms of you selling your property. So uh, prices are pretty much maintained. I mentioned this again. Consider how resilient the housing market is if the prices have maintained, regardless of what has been happening in the past year or so in terms of the interest rates. Pretty amazing. So, and take note of those of you who are still possibly thinking of, you know, bubble bursting and market dropping, prices dropping. Eh, guys, if it hasn't happened yet, after everything that has happened, what do you think is going to happen with interest rates coming down inevitably later this year? So buyers, Take advantage of every possible wind of opportunity you guys have. Long days of market, bad weather. We had a snowstorm a little while ago. Maybe that'll happen again. Who knows? Take advantage. Get an active realtor. Guys, this is not the time for part-timers, especially on the buy side. Buyers, agents in the GTA, you can't, you can't be working with a part-timer. You can't be working with somebody who's too busy for you and they have you know, other things. Full-time job. Um, guys, for Pete's sake, as I put here, work with somebody who knows the market and is actually active in the market, ready to go out and, and, and meet you at, at the house, ready to show the property and be able to put an offer in at a time that is convenient for you, but is fast. The faster, the better. Um, not because I'm trying to hurry you, not because I'm, I'm a salesman just trying to get you in before the sale is gone. No, guys, this is year after year, decade after decade in GTA. You want to have somebody who's, who's on your side, who's able to show you properties fast and quick and able to find them off and on market. Um, and take advantage of opportunities like I mentioned here. So buyers, please take note. You got your work cut out for you. But again, not impossible. Just in a strong market. Be aware of the reality. Sellers, very important. That pricing your property is very, very pricing your property properly is very, very important. Know what's happening in your area specifically and where the market is heading. Is it getting busier and busier than what say last month, or is it pretty much the same? Should you price low? Mm, that's a toughie because that's the second point. Offer dates are okay. Lots of offer dates out there, but pricing it low, be very careful. Because buyers are not yet necessarily, depending on the area, in the psychological state where they're going to pay a lot over asking. Over asking is a meaningless phrase. However, you want to make sure that you're actually um, pricing your, your, your home in such a fashion that it fits with kind of the rest of the market, but at the same time takes advantage of whatever the pattern is, be it going upwards or staying flat. Um, maximum exposure means your realtor needs to be a worker. Guys, even with if the market that is leaning towards the seller sells you, you need to have somebody who knows how to market their property, uh, market your property. Every property can't be marketed the same way. I know realtors do a lot of volume. I'm going to say who they are. Some do a great idea, a great job. Others, they, you can tell they have a system. Everything looks exactly the same. That this is fantastic for productivity, if, efficiency, and that kind of thing. But you can't market condos the same way you do a house. You can't market this kind of house the same way you do this kind of house. Is it a waterfront property? Is it a fixer upper? Is it a home that's going to be torn down? But still, do you have to focus on the area and that kind of thing? Guess every. Every property is unique. Even cookie cutter homes specifically can be adjusted depending on floor plan and who the builder was. So the point is no more lazy listing agents, guys. A lot of people came out the business because of the slowness of last year. I didn't. And uh, so that's a biggie. 
And communication is a must. I've had several complaints recently uh, talking to people of previous realtors. I talked to, talk to people who haven't sold in the last year, maybe the last two years. They contact me to say, I ask them, like, what, what, what's, what was your impression? Why are you upset about this or that person, agent? Uh, one of the biggest things is communication. Um, they get the sign on the lawn. They get the contract signed, some pictures, possibly, uh, professionally, maybe. And they don't hear from them for a week or two. They have showings. They don't know what's going on. They try to reach out to the agent. Guys, you need a realtor who communicates with you consistently. And in turn, the seller should be available for calls uh, at least once a week or every other day or whatever it is, uh, depending on that relationship and what's happening at the house. You need to have feedback for the home. It's important. And guys, if there are realtors, and I know realtors watch this thing, guys, communicate with your clients. It's so important. At least once a week, you need to have a report with your, with your seller client. If you don't, honestly, you should give the listing away. You're not doing your job, respectfully. And as always, guys, uh, sellers, know your numbers. Guys, this goes for buyers as well, but specifically for sellers, you have to know your numbers. What, uh, how much equity do you have? What are the prices in the area? All those things. What are the prices in the area you're going to be moving to? Um, how do you time that properly? And those kinds of things. You need to know that. I have a sheet that I can send over to you. Uh, it's an article. has all the questions in it. Um, might be of use to you. Contact me. I can get that over to you. So... That said, guys, here's a very important point. And this is some of you, if you fast forwarded and you got to this, good. Listen, in the past year and a half or so, especially for luxury properties and pre-construction properties, appraisals have been coming in low. Warning, please hear me on this. 10, 12%, sometimes 20. I've seen up to almost 40% lower than purchase price. That's a big deal. Especially for pre-construction, because when you buy pre-construction, you might have bought it in 21 or 22. And now 24, 25 are starting to close. And the prices uh, then were higher. And appraisers are specifically, please understand, I do letters of opinion for lawyers, for, for estate sales, those kind of things all the time. And I do them as uh, I, I would do if I'm going to be selling the house, a comparative market analysis. Appraisals don't quite do that. Appraisals are, an appraisal is actually a legal document, which can be used in court. And so appraisers and appraising companies are particularly risk averse. They try to be as conservative as possible. And so what that means is whenever you get the appraisal, there's a likely chance, especially depending on what company is doing it and what appraiser is doing it, and there are many and they're all subjective, um, your appraisal might come in very low. So here's the thing, very important. Hear me out. I don't want to go too on too long. Sometimes there are two appraisals. One is done within the conditional period of the house or the property that you're buying. And sometimes that lender... We want to do another appraisal prior to closing. That's the one you got to be afraid of, afraid of. See, if you got the conditions up front, that's fine and dandy, and the appraisal doesn't come in come in where it needs to be. You don't have the extra cash to make up the difference. Okay, you back off. Unfortunately, you get the house, but you have lost no money. You get your deposit back. Well, what if it happens later on? So one of the things you want to be doing is uh, have a good conversation with your realtor, boss with me, um, and find out, well, when is the appraisal going to be done? Where are we at in this kind of price? You want to be certain of the price or certain of your financial position to be able to fill in whatever gap can be between purchase price and appraisal. Please understand, I've talked to a lot of people, I've talked to lawyers, litigation lawyers and real estate lawyers in the past few months, and I've been told many, many, dozens, possibly hundreds of people who are going to be either sued by, their, by, their, by the builder or sued by the seller or, or uh, just having to lose deposit money. Why? Because they just assumed that the appraiser is going to give you the same price as the realtor or as they naturally thought it was in the market. It was not the case, and they didn't have the cash to make up the difference. So very important. Beware of the appraisal. Questions, contact me. I'm happy to chat with you. I'm happy to you know, find out what the value is of a home. Does it make sense, or does it sound like it's a little bit too low or too high? You guys let me know. So that's important. Please take note. Seriously, guys, that alone might save you hundreds of thousands of dollars. As always, guys, wrapping up this, this uh, market update, want to provide you valuable information that I myself, if I was a buyer, if I was a seller, this is the information I want to know. And uh, of course, anything else, please hit like and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Don't hesitate to reach out. Call me, contact me, uh, send me a text message, uh, email, whatever. All my information is out there online. And, of course, you'll see it at the bottom of the description of the video. Guys, until uh, March, March of 2024, I wish you a great rest of February and a good beginning of March.